classes on uh, Schoology. Let me turn on the recorder. Oh, I've been recording? Oh, my goodness. I've been recording all this time. I hope everybody enjoys the Droid Invent Kit. I just got mine today, and I am just dying to tear into it and play with it. So what we're going to do over the next two or three classes is I'm going to walk you through uh, building a Schoology site. And I'm going to try to adhere as much as possible to the outline that's in our Quality Matters rubric. So I'm sitting here holding my Quality Matters rubric. And I'm going to, that's what I will use to guide me through the, uh, the various creations that we're going to do. So Schoology is an LMS, a learning uh, management system. It is allowed in every school that I know of. Uh, some people will tell you that it costs something. That's not true. Uh, it does cost something if you do it school-wide. In other words, there's an enterprise version of Schoology. And, of course, they would like you to buy that. Uh, but if you want to just use it on your own, you certainly can. You don't have to um, use the enterprise version of Schoology. I have quite a few students who do independent studies. After they have finished with their 12-hour endorsement, so they can get their 15 hours so they can get a bump in their salary. And the 15th hour, we usually do something with <coughs> an online class using Schoology. So let me jump right in. This is the module. Um, what we have done in the past is we've given you an opportunity to pick Blackboard. That's because of the number of people we had in class that were uh, JCPS employees. But more and more, everyone just wants to learn Schoology. I think it's a very simple. Uh, in fact, it's so simple, I think it kind of throws everybody off because they're like, that's all there is to this? And the answer is very simply that. If you go into the module, here is a Schoology guide, beginning Schoology guide. Strongly recommend that if you are new to any of this, go ahead and download this and print it out. Uh, it'll take you by the hand and it'll walk you through everything you need to know. But yet it does it in a very uh, simple manner. So it doesn't throw a lot of complexity at you right away. It's very straightforward. This is the manual. manual. <laughs> um, and here's a couple of them, three of these, as a matter of fact. The, you could probably guess the more you go down through here, the more complicated they get. Again, here's some videos that will walk you through the beginning setup of Schoology. Um, this one is a YouTube channel dedicated to nothing but Schoology resources. If you want to go into it and kind of look around to see if you can find how to do certain things, uh, here's how you make a quiz in Schoology. It's very, very easy. Uh, Schoology re record tool for quizzes. This one, I added it in here. Um, I don't know if, we, if it still is uh, important or if it's even working anymore, but I left it in here. And then um, this is where you can kind of, if you want to really take off with your Schoology course, watch this, because this will show you how to do that. And then down here, this one I, I probably should move to the top, because this one really speaks to the knowledge building principles that we have been working on. This is how to design a student-paced Schoology site. In other words, a student-centered Schoology site. Um, I have one. and. Uh, I think either the teacher has taken it down or she's created a new one and I don't have access to it. But it was a marvelous example, and I can show you bits and pieces of it. It was a marvelous example of how you can use Schoology and uh, adhering to the knowledge building principles. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out 
and go straight to Schoology. Very simple, Schoology.com. Now, for the purposes of your course, you are going to build your own Schoology. You're not using my login for this. So you're going to come over here to where it says sign up for Schoology, and you're going to sign up as an instructor. I've already, of course, done that, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this is me on Schoology. People get a little confused with this. They think there's something else. That this is your site where your classes live. No, no, no. This is you. So when you log in as you, this is what you see. You see you. And as you can see here, uh, stuff that I've had up here is um, some voice thread stuff. Oh, here we go. This is the class I was talking to you about. So in this class, they use the Schoology, and they use their Chromebooks to record themselves playing the ukulele. It's a music class. And this is how they uh, demonstrate their understanding. They actually record their product. Found it's atrocious. But the nice thing about it is you can see that they're the the uh, questions that are going back and forth. Um, I gotta see this one. Drag me down. I wonder if it's the song I think it is. Okay, this is great. This is a great Schoology site. Now, I, when I look down here at the questions, let's see how long this has been. Okay, this is the end of May. So, obviously, they're not doing very much uh, knowledge building here. It's just pretty much, hey, good job. Uh, hi, who are you? You know, that sort of questioning. But that would come from the teacher to kind of push that further into um, the kids doing knowledge building. Now, how do I start something here? Well, let's go look at up here where it says courses. I'm going to create a course. And I'm going to give it a name, Steve's Course. And of course, you can probably guess you can uh, delete these which, of course, I will. Uh, section 1, so I'm going to give it a section name. So I'm going to call it Schoology 101. And then under subject area, I'm going to pick a subject area for it. I'm going to call it technology. And then I'm going to create. And now it gives me a blank canvas. This is where now I have my Quality Matters rubric in hand, and I'm going to start thinking about how I'm going to start with Quality Matters uh, rubric number standard 101. Introduce, uh, introduce yourself to the class. Uh, talk about what the class is going to be. Now, we've got so many ways of doing this that it is Almost, um, we could spend the entire class period talking about. I'm going to show you a couple. So when you start out in Schoology, which is pretty much what you do in any LMS, the first thing you want to do is organize yourself around folders. So I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to give the title to my folder. I'm going to steal it right off of my QM, I'm going to call it Course Introduction. Now, you can call it whatever you want. If, if I were working in a middle school 
or an elementary school, I might jazz that up a little bit, you know, our beginning of our journey. Um, let's investigate, you know, all these kinds of things. But now look at this. I can change and pick a color here. Now, to me, what does that mean? Well, now I can speak very eloquently uh, to UDL, Helping Kids with Strategies for Learning, so I can say, always start with the yellow folder. Always start with the red folder. Always start with, you get the idea. And so I'm going to go in here and pick a color. Right here, I can put a description. And I'm going to say, welcome to our class. Simple as that. Again, can I make this cool? Can I do it better? Sure. Absolutely. I'm going to make it published. I'm not going to worry about a date right now. Um, you notice up here you've got the same kind of boxes that you would have for uh, anything. I can do all kinds of cool stuff here. I can put in a link. I can put in an image. I can put in a YouTube. Oh, my goodness gracious. So right away, my introduction folder, let's do that. Let's do that right real fast here. Okay, so I'm going to go look for Intro to Schoology. And all I want is an introduction. And I kind of like the look of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it. And let's see what it sounds like. It's a minute. It's a minute and 41. I think I can do that one. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to throw a whole lot of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that in. And I'm going to import it as embed. Now we understand what that means, don't we? It, uh, we know that it now is going to show up as the actual video. So I'm going to go ahead and say create. And there we go. So now I have a course introduction folder. And inside of that, or on the top layer of that, is a video that basically is about what we're going to be doing. Now, if I click on the inside of this, I'm back to adding materials. Now, let me show you something that I discovered this week. It's a website called Answer Garden. AnswerGarden.ch. I'm not sure what CH stands for. Um, you know, it's a country code, and I'm not sure if that's China. I'm not sure what it is. But what this does is this allows you to build, a, very simply, a way for people to crowdsource their understandings about things. Does it need a uh, user account? Does it need any of that? So all you have to do is... You click on Create an Answer Garden, and then it says, what's your question you want to ask? Describe in one word your understanding of Schoology. I can make it uh, these different modes. In other words, you can control for how the answers will appear. I'll go ahead and say brainstorm. And then I'm going to come down here. You've got these spam filters. You can moderate the answers. You've got all kinds of things you can do with it. Uh, how long do I want it to be there? Isn't that cool? So I can have it here for, say, the week of the course. Okay, I'm going to create. Now that I've created it, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to uh, share it. Now notice when it says share, it allows me to share it directly out to these sources. Well, that's nice. But I want to put it straight into my Schoology course. So I can either put this link in here. Well, 
Links are nice, but they're not very sexy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the embed code, and I'm going to jump back into my Schoology course. Now, for things like this, what you want to do is you want to add a page. Pages are exactly what you think they are. They allow you to have these sort of standalones where you can either write on them or you can put content on them like I'm getting ready to do. So let's check for our Schoology knowledge. I'm going to go down through here, and what I'm looking for is the ability to turn on the ability to turn on uh, HTML. And it was right here, published students. Yes, I'm going to do that. Let's click in there and see if that turns anything on. Spell check, table, insert content. There we go. Duh. Yes, there we go. All right. So I'm going to put it in as, let's try and see if link will work. I don't think that's going to work, so I'm going to cancel that. Oh, dear, I feel rather silly now because I just did this a moment ago. I'm going to publish it to students, individually assigned. Let's see, is link, link doesn't to do anything? Nope. There it is. The little dot over here on the far right. I knew it was a dot. I'm going to switch to HTML. And I'm going to paste it in. And then I'm going to create. Okay. Um, once I've done that, and I click on it, it's going to pop up here. It takes it a second or two. There it goes. And it's going to pop in, and it's going to allow now for anybody who comes into this, describe in one word your understandings of Schoology. So I'm going to type in, spell it correctly, easy. And then what it does is it puts that word here on the screen. And so every time someone comes in and adds a new word, it puts it on the screen. If someone comes in and adds the same word, in other words, they think it's easy too, what will happen is it will start making this look bigger, kind of like in a word cloud. And then if you scroll over it, you'll see that two people have thought this was easy. Now, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but this would be a part of rubric one. Because what we're doing is, is we're establishing how things are, are, we're establishing what it is that we need to know about our class. I'm going to go back to Course Introduction, Add Materials. Now this time, I might add a page. And I'm going to come, go down here, and I'm going to go, Hi, in this course, we will learn about Schoology. Okay. Now, one of the things that it does let me do is I can add things to it. So if I want to come up here and add a, a picture, so I'll go to Insert and go to, and I'm going to go find a file. This might take a while. <laughs> I always forget where my pictures are. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm dropping into my Dropbox account. And I'm looking for, there he is, Swan UL. And in here, there are various pictures that I have of myself that I use 
for you know, all kinds of things. He thought, but that's okay. You're getting the idea. I can go and find a picture of myself. Let's go back up here to another folder where it might be. What I'm doing here is, is I am personalizing. There it is. I'm personalizing <coughs> what's going on. And so there's my face. And now I can add some more language here about what we're going to do with our class and so on. Um, again, that was under the all these tools across the top are just like simple, simple little um, word processing tools. And here I can go back in here. I could put a link. Again, I could put an H uh, YouTube video in here. Um, it's really quite simple. It's really quite simple to build all this stuff. Now, let me show you where the things are that control what you're doing. So as you can see, I've got my sort of hello down here below where I'm, I'm doing a little crowdsourcing. So I want to move that. Thank you very much. And I'm going to move it. If I do this, I think it moves it to the top. There we go. So that's two ways I can move it. I can either click on the gear down here and say move, or I can just grab the edge of it and just drag it up. So now I'm getting a little bit better definition of what's going on here. If I go back to my quality matters rubric, I might want to put in uh, prerequisite knowledge, uh, minimal technical skills, the self-introduction, I kind of started that. Um, etiquette, in other words, what we're supposed to do in here as students. And once I get this built, I can go on and build the next folder. Now, notice that within here, I can click and I can add even more stuff inside the folder, inside the folder. And as you can see here, I can, add an, uh, I can add a folder within a folder. I can add an assignment. I can add a text. We'll go over all that later. And I can add discussion. Now let's go uh, to the top here. So we have an introduction folder. How about if we have a folder that basically is our standards. So now we're looking at uh, Quality Matters 2. And like I just did, I'll give this one a color. And I'm going to make it available. Here is what we are learning. So I'm going to go ahead and create that folder. Now I have another folder. I go into that folder. This is where I can start thinking about, again, going back to my knowledge building um, principles. And here, I might want to add a discussion forum. And just put up a very simple question. What do you no, better idea. What are your ideas about Schoology? And again, I can I can turn on grading. In other words, I can count the number of times a kid's come in. 
In other words, uh, the, the assignment might be you have to at least put one post into the discussion forum. I can turn that on. I'm going to leave it off for right now. And there we are. So here inside of the standards, I can have a discussion forum that basically asks kids what they think. Now, let's go back into the standard. And let's see. I probably should add a page. And now, even though the, there is nothing in Jefferson or in the Kentucky for kids learning how to use an LMS. Let's see if we can just find something. Otherwise, I would just use, I would go into, um, well, here they've got the whole, there we go. Yeah, it's telling me who started all this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to this one. And let's go to standards. Oh, this is cool. This is somebody's... Um, Is this a Pinterest board? Or just somebody got really fancy with their... Okay, I'm not going to waste too much time with this. They're basically giving me rankings and all that. But you get what I'm trying to do. I would find some content that I could copy and I could put in here and basically paste it in. Or I could do the following. We will discover and create content for our Schoology class. Okay. Now, I'm going to dress this up a little bit. Just going to get it, you know, make it look a little bit nicer. And I might add a picture in here. Now you saw how I did that. I went to uh, insert content, and then it said, what, what content do you want to put in? And then I went and found what I wanted to put in. So I'm just going to go ahead and say create. Okay. Go back up here. So I have a course introduction, and I have standards. If I go into my standards, I now have a way to uh, have kids give me feedback. What are your ideas about Schoology? Uh, one of the things you want to do uh, also is go ahead and, and create a, uh, get your avatar created so you will show up whenever you write one of these. The kids will pick up on how to do it real fast. Also, notice up here where the book is. You can go into here and you can edit the picture for your class, or you can put your face in there. You know, it's up to you. So like if I throw my in there, I'm already in here. Why do you keep asking me this? Oh, it wants me to edit. No, I don't need to edit. It looks fine. So there I am. Um, but I see lots of these people put in lots of things. I just go out and find graphics from the web and they'll put them in here. I know this is, I'm going painfully slow, but I'm trying to see, get you to see structure here. So the, if we do follow the QM, um, we've got a folder here, and I haven't even begun to fill it, where I basically walk through, 
I'm doing a little crowdsourcing here. What are your thoughts? What do you know? I am, um, I've got my face in here. And then I've got another one that, well, on this page, I would obviously have a lot more detail about the course. But then below it, I've got the standards that basically describe what it is that we need to be doing. Let me show you one. So I'm going to show you a class that's going on right now at Seneca High School. So this is Math Concepts Section 1. And if we click up here, let's see what this is. Because it says click here first. There's the teacher. So she's, she did a little film of herself, and she put that in to introduce the kids to the class. Right here she has her syllabus for the class. And there you go. The thing you'll notice about this particular course, and, and this is the style of this particular teacher, it's very linear. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let's see what assignment one is. Excellent. Uh, this is a part of her um, independent study that she's doing for me. So one of the things that we ask them to do is to come up with a uh, online survey so that we can find out what do kids have ever had an online course and so on. Now she gets down to the meat of the class. So you can see she's going to start talking about prime numbers. I do not know what GCF is. Let's go take a look at it. Greatest common factor. <laughs> Okay. Notice how she, when she has the uh, YouTube vids open, she has them set up so that you just close out of them and you go right back to where you were. Very smart. The other way I would do this would be like we just showed is I would put the embed so the video would be sitting right here. Either way is fine. Uh, don't get GCF. Okay, now we know what it is. Okay, there's nothing here. I'm sure she'll clean this up when she gets down to looking at her quality matters. Here's our first assignment, oh, Katie. And there it is. And there it is. OK. All right. And then she's got the actual document sitting down here that they could use. Now, you notice when I say linear, the nice thing about it is um, every time I click on something, here's the home right, button right there, right above it. So it's very easy uh, for me to go back and forth within this structure. It's not difficult at all. Watch me to help with assignment three. Okay. I don't think that's Miss Burks. Well, that sure brought back a lot of memories. Uh, let's see. OK, so this is where she's at right now. And I, this is perfect. This is exactly what you want. Now, what are we missing out of here if we were grading this using the QM uh, rubric? I would say that what we're missing, well, let's look, well, we've got our syllabus. Eh, maybe I can cut her some slack here. So the syllabus probably has the objectives in it. Let's go back and look at that. Of course it does. Of course it does. There you go. Yeah. 
So everything's here in the syllabus. All right. I can cut her a little bit of slack. I don't know if I'd give her a three on that one. I might give her a two. But, you know, that's, that's up for debate. You know, she might say, well, wait a minute, dummy. I've, I've put everything in that. And I don't need to clutter up my screen with a whole bunch of stuff. If I have a document that does it, then it does it. And she's got it obviously well identified as syllabus. So, yeah, I'll change my mind. I'll give her a three. Um, but it's all here. Oh, look over here. She has under information, the course is intended for students in their fourth year of high school who have not reached the benchmark on the ACT. The purpose of this course is to enable students to transition, so on, so on, location, so on, so on. Great. Great design. Very simple. Um, you don't have to get all crazy. But crazy sometimes help, depending upon who you're working with. Or it can be very distracting. I don't see people who are supposed to have sent me their courses. Let me look at this one real fast. Let's see what this one might be. OK, so this was a class where a guy was teaching Excel. Advanced geometry. Read me first. Let's see, quizzes. OK, so she's just started building this one as well. Oh, no, it's fairly old. I need to get some more examples in here. But I think you're getting the idea. Keep it straightforward. Keep it simple. Follow what the QM does. So for today, what have we done? We've looked at QM rubric 1 as it is done inside of Schoology. We've looked at QM rubric 2 as it's done inside of Schoology. Um, let's next time, I'm going to kind of jump back and forth here. I'm going to really focus on the instructional materials. So that's number four. And then we'll take a look at assessment. The reason why I'm kind of going back, back and forth here is there is so much you can add into Schoology. It's kind of overwhelming, frankly. Let me just drop it in here real fast. So see, if I go to add the options, I've got all of this. But what is this right here? What's a package? Well, packages are web content that you can put in. Um, and a file external tool, when you click on that, now you've got all kinds of different sort of tools that you can put in that you can use. Uh, this thing can really be quite, quite, uh, you could really build a very extensive course with this. And that's what we'll spend next time doing. We'll spend the time on investigating uh, all these different resources. Uh, you can put a, a a voice thread in here. Now, I don't necessarily think you'd want to be able to do the voice thread because you can't. You can't put the voice thread in and expect kids to comment back to you. But you certainly could put a voice thread, and I mean embed it, so it, it just plays, just like this is playing right now. That could do your introduction. Or, just like she did, you could make a video of yourself. Or, you could just put a page in and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. And this is our class. So I'm going to stop here, give you a chance to sort of think, digest, and build. Uh, I want to go back to the Schoology assignment, because I want you to realize something here. You're building your final. Um, it's that simple. And what it asks you to do here is it's basically asking you to develop a Schoology course with one lesson. Please pay attention to that one lesson. Now, if you find this really like, hey, this is stuff I can use, you go right ahead and build you know, more than one. But 
the minimum is just one lesson. And as you can see there, there's a blend of sort of the knowledge building ideas as well as the QM ideas. So you're, I'll be looking to see for an introduction, a central question, an activity. Hmm. We'll go into that next week. Uh, graphics that enhance, illuminate, web app resources, and of course, assessment. Assessment inside of Schoology is Cinchy, 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 Cinchy. That's why I don't pay too much attention to it because it's just that easy to do. Last thought, Schoology does interface with Google Classroom. Uh, Schoology does have its own grade book that it keeps. I have heard from people who use it out in uh, the public schools that they can get it to talk to their online grading system that they use uh, in their schools. Kids will be logging into Schoology. Uh, it's already set up in, in uh, JCPS that they log in with their own usernames and passwords. So that's one thing you don't have to do. So that would be a question I would ask whoever the tech person is in your building. Uh, do we have Schoology accounts? Uh, and if so, do kids just log in with their username and password that they would use, that they would log into the lab with, or even into uh, Google Classroom, because they're all the same. It's all the same thing. And that's it for today. I'm going to call it quits here to give you a chance to start with building uh, your course first, uh, decorate it up and then put in your introduction and put in your objectives and standards that you'll be meeting. And remember, one lesson is all we're going to do. And once you get this built, hey, 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 you've done the final because the final basically asks you to take a look at this that you built using that, the quality matters which, of course, we went in great detail in last class. Evelyn, do you have any questions for me since you're the only one here? No, just trying to digest it all. That's why I'm taking it in little tiny bites. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. So as I said, go in. You've got to create your own. Don't try to go in as Steve because you'll just pile up in all the mess it's for me. Create your own uh, and then Use Add Materials, create a folder. That folder is your introduction. If you don't want to use the folder, and I can understand that, just do a page. You know, either way, there's nothing here that is right or wrong, except when you look at it through the lens of Quality Matters. I did a course introduction folder here, but I could have easily have done a page, which is what this is, by the way. And then on this page, I could have written, hello, I'm Steve Swan, your teacher, da 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 So I could have done a page. I'm just a folder kind of guy. I like folders. And I like folders to have colors uh, designating them. And that way I can say to a kid, go look in the blue folder, go look in the green folder. Uh, I don't have to worry about um, can they read the word standards. Again, that's a UDL thing. And then down here under standards, um, I would have put a discussion form in here to basically allow kids to have a chance to, what is your ideas about Schoology? Um, and then as they, when they log in and they see this, they're not going to see me. That's me leaving a comment. They would see themselves here. Uh, so don't let that throw you either. It is set up right now to be you logging in, and that's okay. What you're going to do for me for your final is you're going to give me this right here. You're going to put this into the uh, live text document. And that way then when I go to join your class, all I have to do is come up here to courses and join. I put in the access code and then I can see your course. That's another way you can do it with kids. You can just give them the access code and have them come in here and join the class. But as I said, most schools have this set up. You just have to ask somebody. All right, going to call it a quits. As always, you know how to get a hold of me. Um, this is something I was playing with earlier today, uh, the Droid Inventor. Uh, there's some cool stuff there. I really need to get a class on the books.
for uh, robotics coding and programming for P12 teachers. I really need to do that uh, outside of the computer science classes. I mean, computer science classes get into programming with C++ and Python and all that. But there's a whole lot of other areas where you could teach kids how to do this kind of stuff that don't necessarily have to be that high a level, but yet can be very challenging and fun. Okay, I'll see you next Thursday, everybody. Thank As you. always, 502-457-2937 if you need to get a hold of me. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, let's turn off the recording.